President Muhammad Buhari has appealed to prospective members of the All Progressives Congress to take advantage of the re-registration and revalidation exercises to come into the fold of the Progressives family. The President, in a recorded message, said APC has become a true platform for social political development in Nigeria. There comes a time when all good people must not only speak, but rise up and get involved in the task of improving their society. The need has never been greater than now for all Nigerians to actively contribute to the all important task of nation building by bringing about good leadership and governance. For most citizens, their greatest weapon is their vote. Register now for your party and register when the time comes for elections. Political parties are the main vehicles under our laws through which citizens can participate in the ideas and practices of our democracy. As we have seen happening around the world, good citizens join political parties and use them to bring about the changes they desire. I'm therefore endorsing the nationwide membership registration and the revalidation exercise embarked upon by our party, the All Progressive Congress. I call on patriotic Nigerians to come out during the exercise, which starts on the 26th of January and avail themselves of the opportunity to join the APC. Similarly, the president of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, has appealed to prospective members to take full advantage of the exercise as the APC re-registration and revalidation exercise takes off this weekend. Registration, revalidation and update exercise of our great party, the All Progressives Congress, APC, is finally here. The exercise commences on Monday, the 25th of January 2021 and offers current party members and other Nigerians the opportunity to take or renew their membership of the APC. I'm therefore calling on all party men and women and every eligible Nigerian to come out and register in their wards. This will enable them to actively participate in the affairs of the party and the political administration and development of our beloved country, Nigeria. The exercise is open to all Nigerians, 18 years, all and above. As we warmly embrace the exercise, I urge us all to be orderly and law-abiding and observe all the health safety protocols. Register as a member and join in strengthening the APC as a party of the Nigerian people and the promoter of peace, unity and progress of our dear country. Long the Director General of the All Progressives Congress Governors Forum, Salihu Mohammed Lukman, has challenged political parties and leaders to assert their authority in mobilizing alternative responses which should inspire Nigerians to rise above the current high wave of ethnic and religious hatred in the country. In a statement, the Director General said the time is now to strengthen the institutions and actors that are weakening the nation's capacity to arrest and prevent criminal activities. Reacting to the crisis in parts of uh, Oyo State, Salihu Lukman wants a stronger politics uh, to be able to manage difficult realities in Nigeria as a united country that remains one despite its diversities. The statement appealed to the governor, Meimala Buni, led APC Ketika, an extraordinary convention planning committee to initiate internal processes of consultations both within the party and across the executive and legislative arms of governments at all levels. Away from politics, in line with the federal government's moves to reposition the teaching profession, the Aqua Wim State Government has approved the employment of 1,000 qualified teachers for secondary schools. Stakeholders in the educational sector say with the commencement of the exercise, they are optimistic that upon completion, the recruitment will boost manpower in the system as well as enhance students' performance academically. Emediong Mo, who sought the views of these stakeholders, now reports. 
Having assured the people of his determination to focus more on education this year by ensuring upgrade of infrastructures, improved welfare for teachers, and increased workforce, the governor of Akwaibom State, Udomi Mano, has taken a step further by approving the recruitment of 1,000 teachers into State Secondary Education Board, a move considered by stakeholders as a welcome development geared towards increasing the labor force considering the population of students in most secondary schools in the state. Teachers have been retiring and they were not replaced and they, they were running short of our staff, teaching staff in the school and uh, it is a step in the right direction. It's going to be a positive one in that there are some subjects that has not been taught which was very necessary in the curriculum. The chairman of Kwaibom State Secondary Education Board, Ekaite Bongokun, speaks on the processes of the recruitment. The governor is very particular about the quality of the people who are training our children. Therefore, first class candidates will have additional advantage. On whether the recruitment is being hijacked by politicians or a level playing ground is given to all applicants, she has this to say. Anybody who wants to make a career as a teacher in State Second Education Board or any of the um, parastatal of the Minister of Education should be ready to know that it is not business as usual, but a, a thing that you must commit yourself to doing, and therefore we expect the best out of it. The entire recruitment process, including oral interview, is expected to have been completed by the second week of March 2021 in Uyo. In other news, victims of last year's brainstorm in Loring West local government area of Kwara State and internally displaced persons have received food and non-food items to alleviate their sufferings. Iyabode Olunshola reports that the items were distributed courtesy of the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons. It would be recalled that many residential buildings and public infrastructures were severely damaged by rainstorm in October last year in parts of Ilori. As part of its mandate, the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons, with the support of the federal government, has commenced the distribution of the first phase of the palliatives with ASA local government as next set of beneficiaries. This is the second in the series of intervention. Last year, March specifically, the lives of persons of concern were touched in Patiji local government area and likewise the Loni East local government area of Kuala State. I am advising them to make use of the items judiciously and not to not for commercial. Items distributed include grains such as maize, rice, vegetable and palm oil. Other items are mattresses, mats and sewing machines. Aminat Imam Jima, representing her household, is one of the beneficiaries of the federal government's palliatives to the affected rainstorm victims. Most of the rainstorm that happened last year, most of us have mended our house. The food are too much expensive now. When we are giving this food, it will help the family, it will help our community and our environment at large. We will not be uh, searching for food again. This item will go a long way. We are appreciating the federal government for this uh, benefit. Iyabode Olorunshola, NTA News. Now, looking at security, the Directorate of Defense Media Operations, DMO, says the air component of Operation Thunder Strike has neutralized several armed bandits at uh, a forest in the Mangore area of uh, Chukun local government area in Kaduna State. DMO Coordinator Major General John Eneche says the operation was executed on 23rd January 2021. To quote the credible intelligence reports indicating the significant presence of armed bandits in the area, which is about 20 kilometers west of the Kaduna Abuja Highway, following confirmatory aerial surveillance missions. Nigerian Air Force fighter jets and helicopter gunships attacked the location, and the bandits were seen firing at the attack helicopter at its uh, strapped dam. Several armed bandits were accordingly neutralized in the airstrikes, while some escaped with various degrees of injuries. Meanwhile, air surveillance missions have been intensified in coordination with ground troops to locate the fleeing bandits. 
Meanwhile, Zamfara State Governor Belo Mohammed has ordered for immediate release of foodstuff and other essential items to the persons displaced by the recent armed bandits attack on some communities in Maru and Marudun local government areas of the state. The governor, who was in the area to commiserate with the victims, also said military personnel would be stationed there to restore normalcy. Haliru Muhammad Umar has more. Fewer than four communities were recently attacked by bandits in Maru local government area of Zamfara State, where authorities confirmed the death of 35 persons and the displacement of many others. <laughs> Governor Bello Mohammed, accompanied by 12 government officials and heads of security agencies in the state, was at the affected areas to commiserate with members of the communities and to reassure them of government renewed commitment to achieving lasting peace. The governor, who addressed the IDPs at Ashala Fia Kanomo Primary School in Maru local government area, ordered for immediate release of foodstuffs and other essential items to the victims. He said military will be stationed in the area to restore normalcy so that the IDPs could be returned to their respective villages. Governor Bella Muhammad was also at Jambako district in Maradun local government area where a similar incident occurred. We are going to provide adequate security to come to Jambako and remain here as well. I ask the people to supply all information and credible intelligence to the security that will be posted to this district. The emirs of Maru and Maradun, Alhaji Aubakar Gadu and Alhaji Garba Tambari, commended the governor for his swift response to the plight of their subjects and assured him of continued support to the peace process. Meanwhile, Governor Bella Muhammad has commiserated with the emir of Kauranamoda, Alhaji Sanusi Muhammad Asha, over the recent attack on his convoy by bandits along Zaria Fontua Road, which claimed eight persons, including three police officers. In Gusau, Haliru Muhammad Umar, NTA News. And in Borno, the governor, Professor Babagana Omar Zulim, has praised Nigeria's security forces, civilian joint task force, and the vigilante for successes being recorded in the counter insurgency operations. The governor made the remark in southern Borno while presenting first class staff of office to the 29th Emir of Biu, May Mustafa Umar Mustafa, whose coronation in Biu town attracted Nigerians from all walks of life. Mohammed Goni reports. The May Mustafa Umar Mustafa II, the 29th Emir of Biu, ascended to the throne of his ancestors that has existed for over 500 years following the demise of his father in September last year. Governor Wagana Umar, who congratulated the Emir on his installation, also charged him to consolidate on the foundation laid by his late father, May Umar Mustafa Aliu, by being just and fair and to carry everybody along, as well as promote development in education, health, agriculture, and security. The Emirates is one of the oldest, largest, and highly populated Emirates Council in the state, with four local government areas, namely Biu, Paul, Fayakutar, and Bayo local government areas. The Emirates today remains the economic hub and agricultural backbone of our state. The governor used the occasion to praise the Nigerian Armed Forces and other security operatives, vigilante and members of the civilian JTF on the recent successes they have been recording in the fight against insurgency in Borno, assuring continued support to the ongoing counter-insurgency operations to restore peace to the state. In Mairuguri, Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. And in the south south region of Nigeria, four persons lost their lives just as property and other means of livelihood were destroyed in a gas explosion at a domestic gas plant along Lagos Asaba Expressway, Agbo. Governor Ifai Yokoa visited the scene of the devastation. Onyeye Joshua Ifai has details. The inferno, which started at 6 p.m. Friday, left so many persons dead and 17 others in critical conditions at the Central Hospital, Agbo. However, the hospital could only administer first aid treatment on the victims as the hospital had no bonds and plastic units consultants before referring them to Federal Medical Center, Asaba, from there to the University of Benin Teaching Hospital. An eyewitness account said the fire was as a result of leakage from the pipe discharging the products from the tanker to holding tanks. Some people now they argue say uh, they know the hose they leak but suddenly what thing can happen what thing we just 
you just see sign of fire once even people where they pass for road the magnet burns palm trees and seedlings as well as the charred remains of the domestic gas plants we are what greeted residents and indigents of the town who we are trooping in to assess the level of damage at the scene of the fire incident other concerned residents appeal to government to look into safety rules and siting of gas plants in residential areas having gas plant uh, station around or within the residence is, is not encouraging and it's not advisable it's really a bad one and it has consumed life even at this minute at this junction we cannot tell the exact uh, number of deaths the governor dr ifan yokoa visited the scene and condoled the people we went around and we've seen the extent of the rustication uh, of course with gas there's a lot of extensive uh, uh, damage that has been done from Agbo, Onyunye, Joshua Ifai, NTA News. In the meantime, the court martial Boboye Oyeme has deployed safety engineers to Akungba to ascertain the causes of incessant trailer crashes that have bedeviled that particular route of the highway and recommend solutions. This is in addition to an ambulance rescue point earlier established close to the flash port for prompt rescue operations. In a statement, the court marshal says the initiative is a part of efforts to mitigate incidences of crashes on the highways following the fatal uh, multiple crashes that killed several passengers with others sustaining various degrees of injuries on Saturday, 23rd January 2021, along Ikare or Road by Adekunle Ajasin University. Akumba. OEMB expressed satisfaction with the friendly collaboration among security agencies in Nigeria who played a vital role in evacuating the victims and ensuring adequate deployment of men to control traffic around the crash scene. With the deployment of these professional and certified safety engineers, the court martial expressed confidence that the factors responsible for road crashes on that route will surely be ascertained and when that is done, necessary actions will be taken by appropriate agencies. Now, a two-week training program has been organized at the Administrative Staff College of Nigeria, ASCON, Badagri, for chief executive officers in governments, parastatals and agencies across the country to develop strategic leadership and management competences for the overall benefit of the nation. Uzezi Aruri has details. In pursuance of the federal government's economic diversification agenda and strategic repositioning of agencies across the nation, chief executive officers in public sectors are from time to time exposed to new ways of doing things. The public service in its entirety is a culture guided by fundamental rules and regulations enshrined in federal government documents that oversees the operation of the service. The program will afford the CEOs the opportunity to sharpen their skills for effective running of the organizations within the purview of laid down rules. They will also develop deeper understanding of their mandates in alignment with the goals and objective of government. To achieve their objectives, the course content is made up of six modules, which have been selected to cover essential aspects of public sector management and leadership. We are grateful to the administration of President Muhammad Buhari for finding us worthy to serve and for the immeasurable support availed us as a college. The Administrative Staff College of Nigeria, ASCON, was established to carry out a tripartite mandate of training, research and consultancy in all sphere of the nation's economy. In Lagos, Uzezi Arure, NTA News. Let's take a quick break. Panorama continues shortly. The struggle for independence had been a long and tough one. Our founding fathers and compatriots sacrificed their comfort and even shed their blood. We cannot at this point in history afford to spirit away their sacrifices for immediate but temporary gains of today. Let us emphasize what unites and not what divides us. Working for the unity of purpose with a stronger vision for a better tomorrow. NTA growing with the nation.
together No matter where you come from No matter your religion We are one Let's live together Let's stop fighting each other Let us live as one It doesn't matter Where you come from Your tribe or religion Man, woman or child It doesn't matter who you are Put Nigeria first No matter where you come from Your religion, we are one, let's live together. How can we develop when we're always in crisis? Families have become refugees in their country. No matter our differences, show some understanding. No matter where you come from, no matter your religion, we are one, let's live together. Nigeria, the only country we can train with remarkable potentials to excel. Let us believe in ourselves and change our attitude for the sake of our country and generations unborn. Let us revive our cultural values which are our essence as a nation. Let us renew the spirit of patriotism and hope in our dear country. Do not take or give bribe. Be punctual always. No more African time. We can't expect to be global citizens and operate on African time. Join the queue. Insist that people are attended to on a first-come basis no matter who they are or where they come from. Nigeria, good people, great nation. Let's now take a look at health and uh, specifically at uh, the pandemic. 964 new COVID-19 infections have been recorded in Nigeria uh, in the last 24 hours. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, says the new infections were reported in 18 states in the FCT, bringing Nigeria's caseload to 121,566. Lagos tops the latest statistics with 360 new cases. FCT has 88, Ogun 73, Imo 72, Kaduna 67, Plateau 57, Abia and Oshun have 41 cases. Rivers 32, Kano 26, Na Niger 24 and Benue 23 cases. Edo and Cross River states recorded 20 new cases, Akwa Ibom 8, Nasarawa 6, Zamfara 6, Ekiti 6 and Jagawa 4 new cases. The charge cases now sums up to 97,228, while the death toll is 1,504. And now a bit of sports. Nigeria police celebrates uh, victory at one service, one medal games in Abuja. Ayodeji Makinde has more.